name is Sarah Sullivan, and I live in Norwood, Massachusetts. Well, we started to get involved with the Turner Syndrome Society very early. Um, my daughter was diagnosed prenatally, so we knew right up front, and we, ser we searched for information, and we happened upon the Turner Syndrome Society, just, and it was a great resource for us to try and find help. More than anything, um, the Turner Syndrome Society um, has helped me realize I'm not alone. Um, we're not alone in this. Um, it's an incredible group of people that know what you're going through and know they understand the little nuances that other people don't necessarily see. And I always call the conference my sanity check because after a year sometimes you just need to know that, okay, some of these things that drive me crazy are okay. <laughs> and um, and not the only one, and I'm, I'm not the only one, and my daughter's not the only one, and really, in the grand scheme of life, they're not such a big deal, and you just learn to, you know, look at things in a new way. My daughter's name is Caitlin Sullivan. She's now 14 years old. She was diagnosed very early. Um, I had an ultrasound at 11 weeks, and they saw the cystic hygloma, and um, that indicated chromosomal disorder, so we had testing in AMEO, and by about 16 weeks, we knew that we were going to have a daughter with Turner syndrome. It was very difficult. Um, I think I blocked things out because I remember going for those monthly ultrasounds, and I guess I never really knew what they were looking for, and I think after I became aware that they were looking for fluid and looking for the chances of miscarriage, and I think my doctor protected me from that a little bit. Wisely so, I think she took the time to know me and to know what I could handle. It was my first pregnancy, what I could handle and what I couldn't handle. Um, it involved some more testing, which I think in some ways was good. I always battled with myself on this. Um, we had we were able to do the fetal echo, and we kind of knew that we were we looked okay on the heart issues, but obviously the anxiety of delivery um, and you know that they were going to take her right away to make you things like that were, were hard and, I mean, make you anxious. You're already anxious when you're pregnant, and that just added. But we were able to have all the extra support. We, we went to a hospital with an, a NICU, which we were not starting at a hospital with a NICU. So it allowed us to make decisions that made it the best for all, for all of us involved. Everything went well. Um, you know, <laughs> she came out screaming and yelling. Um, she, we were, it was a long labor, so it was a C-section, but that was more because they were concerned about the heart, and I think they were very careful knowing the diagnosis. Um, they took her right up, and they said, don't expect to see her for 24 hours. Well, about three hours later, they came, brought her right back down <laughs> and said, you know, everything's fine. We're just going to, you know, go, go forward from here. Um, one of the most interesting things was I tried to breastfeed, and it was very, if I'd only known then what I know now, you know, it's very common to have a high palate and a short tongue, and after five days of trying it, the last pediatrician who saw her in the hospital said, no wonder she can't latch on. I guess my first bit of advice is don't be afraid. It's not the end of the world by any stretch of the imagination. I think with... Um, there's so many more positives to me than there are negatives. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's part of our lives, but it's just, I guess how I always look at it is she has Turner syndrome, and you, it's just something she need, you need to accept, and it, it doesn't define who my daughter is. My daughter is Caitlin, and Caitlin Sullivan is Caitlin Sullivan. She's not Turner syndrome Caitlin Sullivan. She's her own individual. She brings so much to the table offer so much that, um, you know, just just encourage them to try things and just because they say that your child may have learning disabilities or just because they say you may struggle in math, it doesn't make it true. Um, you know, let them go after everything with, the, with all their gusto because they have a lot, I think. I think you have to be careful about how much research you do online. I think it's better to talk to people if you can find a person who's gone through the same experience um, as you. My doctor was really good about telling us, you know, if you find something, you need to call me and ask because not everything you read is completely accurate and there's always another side or another three sides to a story. And I think I've learned that even going further along in the process. Thank you. I think the most
most incredible gift we've been given through Caitlin is, Caitlin is her compassion. She just looks at life through a different lens than what I feel a lot of her peers do. She's uh, so compassionate, so kind, sometimes to her detriment, but I think overall, I, I often say to my friends, and many of my friends will say to me, if there were more Caitlins in the world, the world would be a lot better place. She really does go out of her way to be kind and, and caring, and I think notices things about children that other, you know, children with special needs that other kids don't necessarily notice, and that she's always had an affinity for that, and I think that that's such a special gift that we've been given to be able to see the world through her lens versus, you know, the lens that we've always had, I guess. Right. Well, that's a great way of putting it. Our first struggle was the feeding. Um, even with bottle feeding, it was just, at the time, there was a certain brand of bottle that you could only find one place, and that's the only one that worked, and it was, I think I went through every brand of bottle that was available before we found something that worked. She lost weight for the first month, and even the pediatrician didn't realize that that was a natural, um, a, a common occurrence with Turner Syndrome children. So we were in there every week for weighing, and it was just a, a stress. I think that's been a struggle. I mean, that was a struggle as an infant. Um, going along, I think, more so than anything, I think, as a parent, I always get anxious at our checkups or when we're going to see the doctors. Um, I think, you know, you know everything's going to be okay, or you kind of believe everything's going to be okay, but there's still always that, okay, what haven't I thought of, or what haven't I done, who haven't I seen? There's no clear, there's the studies that tell you what you should look at and what you need to look at, but no one's an expert, as far as I have found, in Turner Syndrome. And we live in Boston, which is an incredible place for hospitals and doctors. No one's an expert, and every case is so unique, and this is probably happens with others, um, other syndromes as well, but that's been a struggle all the way along that I'm missing something, and I think that the society has helped me to realize, you know, you just kind of do the best you can, and this is an incredible resource, and every time I come, I learn something different that, you know, maybe I just need to ask about, so. Um, and then, I guess the, the greatest struggles I, I see now more are socially, and trying to fit in and, you know, sometimes I think Caitlin's not always comfortable with herself. And, I mean, I think that's every middle school child. <laughs> so I'm not sure that's necessarily unique, but, you know, I think some of the social, social um, struggles are, are hard to watch as a parent, but I think that's probably with any parent. And, you know, there may be a few unique things with our girls, but they seem to get through.